Hi, I'd like to show you an example of how to use Darcy's Law for layered soils to calculate the flux and also the pressure potentials in a layered soil column. So in this case, we use a, an example of a real soil series called the Teller series. And in that series, you might find for the A horizon a sandy loam with a saturated hydraulic conductivity of around 30 centimeters per day for the top 25 centimeters. And then for about 25 centimeters below that, you may find a BT horizon consisting of a clay loam with a saturated hydraulic conductivity of about 8 centimeters per day. So to calculate the water flow uh, in this situation, we need to use Darcy's Law for layered soils, which I've shown here, where Q is the flux, which is equal to the ratio of the difference in total potentials across the profile divided by the hydraulic sum of the hydraulic resistances of the two layers, RH1 and RH2. Remember the hydraulic resistance is equal to the thickness of the layer, L, divided by the conductivity of that layer. So the calculation procedure uh, will be for us to calculate these two hydraulic resistances that we need for each layer and then to calculate the flux Q and then we can also determine the pressure potentials uh, at point A, the soil surface, at B, the interface between the layers, and C, at the bottom. So let's begin. We uh, start by calculating RH1. So we know for the first layer, we start by calculating RH1. We know that for the first layer, the hydraulic resistance, RH1, is equal to the length or thickness of the layer, which is 25 centimeters, divided by the conductivity, which is 30 centimeters per day. So we compute that ratio, we find the answer is uh, 0 0.833 days. And for the second layer we can do the same. We can calculate the hydraulic resistance. Again the thickness is 25 centimeters and the conductivity in this case is only 8 centimeters per day. So when we compute that ratio we find uh, that the hydraulic resistance of the second layer is 3.13 days. Now we're ready to calculate the flux. To do that we'll need to know what is the total uh, difference in the total potential across the layers and to do that we'll use a table where we solve for the gravitational potentials and the pressure potentials and the total potentials and we'll eventually want to know those for our points A, B, and C. Before we can calculate the gravitational potentials, of course, we have to set a reference elevation. And it's convenient in this case if we set the reference elevation to be the bottom of the soil column. When we do that, then the potential, gravitational potential at C is zero by definition. At B has a potential of 25 centimeters. And A then has a gravitational potential of 50 centimeters. Considering the pressure potentials, we can see at point C that the water is freely draining from the column and that tells us that the, that uh, pressure potential is zero or is equivalent to atmospheric pressure. At point B, we actually can't determine the pressure potential yet. We'll come back to that. Um, and at point A, we see that there are five centimeters of water ponded on the surface so we have a positive pressure of 5 centimeters. So then the total pressure potential at A is 55 centimeters and at B is 0 centimeters. Now we're ready to calculate the flux Q. So the flux Q then is simply given by our difference in uh, soil water potential from point A to point C which in this case is 55 centimeters divided by the sum of these two hydraulic resistances, 
So divided by 0 0.833 plus 3.13 the units are days on both of those. So with that expression we can solve uh, for our flux Q and we'll find that it's equal to 13.9 centimeters per day. Now we really only have two significant figures in this problem but I won't round it off now because we're going to need this uh, result to calculate the pressure potential at B which is still unknown. And the way that we do that is uh, going back and writing uh, Darcy's Law uh, just across the first layer A. Well, so we can write uh, Darcy's Law for layer A where we know the flux is 13.9 centimeters per day. That flux exists through both layers. But what we don't know are the pressure potentials. We know the total potential at A is 55 centimeters. What we don't know at this point is the total potential at B. Psi t at point B. So we have to calculate that using some algebra and we divide that by the hydraulic resistance of the first layer which is 0 0.833. So this just takes some algebra. We're going to multiply by 8.33 to this side and uh, then subtract off 55 and take the negative. When we solve that, we'll find that the total potential at point B has to be equal to 43.4 centimeters of water. So then we can fill in our table here this has to equal 43.4 and then uh, by difference we can see that our pressure potential at B is essentially 18 centimeters. So it's interesting to note that there's not much drop in the water potential as this water flows through layer A. It only goes from 55 to 43 centimeters. Most of the drop in the pressure potential occurs or in the total potential occurs across the second layer where the pressure drops from 43.4 to 0 centimeters. That's simply because of the much lower hydraulic conductivity of the second layer. It takes more uh, drop in water potential to move the, the water through that second layer. So this is an application of Darcy's Law for layered soils, and I hope it helps you get a sense for how the less conductive layer really controls the flow in this scenario.